we talk about the human respirations the human respiration he take control by the part of the brain we call medulla oblongata and pons and the factors that can activate the functions of the respiration in human body here can be three factors the first one is carbon dioxide levels if the carbon dioxide levels increase it can activate the respiration rates and acidity of the blood if the acidity of the blood here become lower it is more acid it also activate the respirations and the decreasing of the oxygen levels here this one is the last step the the last uh things that can activate the respiration okay the acidity here come from the when carbon dioxide um level increase in the blood it will combine with the liquid in the uh the, the water inside the blood and turn into the carbonic acid and after this carbonic acid here will break into h plus that is the acid okay and the hydrogen carbonate ion Okay, so so the acids here come from the combinations of carbon dioxide and water together. This way, so the if impact with this one. Here, as you see from this diagram, this is diagram contain uh, the heart, this one, and the brain, and the respiratory system here. And this is the aorta. Okay, at the top of the aorta here, you will see. The sensors, carbon dioxide and oxygen sensor, in the top of the aorta, and they send this signal here to the brain, around the medulla and pons, here yeah, two dot here. We call breathing centers. Okay, they activate the breathing sen sensors, and after that, they activate the intercostal muscles, or gum the ussicrone. It is a small muscles that link with each rib together, and when they get contract, they can lift up. The shape, uh, lift up the the chest cavity and increase the volume. Okay, and the lower one here, they also activate the functions of the diaphragm. So that way, they will change the blood volume. Oh, uh, sorry, chest volume and uh, chest pressure. The pressure is your chest, and it generate the breathing mechanisms. And this is different. Uh, organs inside the respiratory system start from the nostril, the nostril or through the mouth. This one used for um, exchange the gas between the nose and the environment. And inside the nose here, we have the cavity linked to the pharynx. So this one here we call nasal cavity. And the pharynx or cohoi, this one here linking between nasal cavity here to the lower part of the chest cavity okay and trachea trachea is a is a tube that link between pharynx to the to the lung and they have some small bones small cartilage in here the small cartilage cartilage is a uh, on okay and we have the larynx the larynx here it is part of the organ that used for producing the voice and we have here the chest in inside the chest we have the lungs two lungs here and this is a rib and between each rib here you have intercostal muscles and under the lung here we have the diaphragm or grabang lom this one used for separating the chest cavity and abdominal cavities okay so when the ab when the diaphragm here move is you change the pressure inside the chest so you can get breathing in and breathing out and this is the drawing okay and this is Thai word nasal cavity for prong jamu oral cavity for uh chong pa esophagus for lot ahan and this one is intercostal muscles the muscle that link between two rib okay and rib cage the chrome or even diaphragm here yeah, below here and bronchus, the, the trachea, we also have bron bronchus. Bronchus is the second, second level of branching from the trachea. And the third level is we call bronchial. And at the end, the deepest one here, we call alveolus, a small sac inside the, the lung. The respiratory tract here break into two parts. The first part here is upper respiratory tract. And the lower one we call lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract here composed of nasal cavity, 
pharynx and larynx and the lower respiratory tract it is the trachea primary bronchi it is the first uh, separation here primary bronchi and here many branching and at the end here is the lung like this so the upper part of the respiratory tract here, it get easily infected by the bacteria and virus or even fungi because it is a place where the body temperature get lower but um, the, the lower respiratory tract here you may get harder to get infected because the temperature is quite high inside the body so they can prevent the infection okay and human respiration here deep into the lung here you will see the small sacs like this we call alveoli so the alveoli here around the alveoli here we have blood vessels for example this one we have a vein like this and the artery so the blood vessel here bring the blood to the lung here in order to exchange the gas exchange the carbon dioxide with oxygen and the oxygen here will go to the body again okay this is characters of the chest cavity inside the chest cavity here we have uh, the lung the right lung here we have three lobes this is the first lobe the second lobe here and the third lobe here and the uh, left lung left lung here you have two lobes the first lobe is bigger and the second lobe is here and the sen and uh, between two lungs here we have the heart <coughs> we have the heart here and the gas exchange that occur in the alveolus when the blood goes to the lung here go to the alveoli here it will be the deoxygenated blood with high carbon dioxide levels so enter into the around the alveolus and they exchange the carbon dioxide to the space and the, and get out of the body and after that oxygen from outside the body here enter into the alveolus and dissolve into the blood and turn the state of the blood into the oxygenated blood and go to the body this is the functions of the alveolus the breathing mechanisms between breathing in and breathing out okay first step here the diaphragm here we get contract when the diaphragm get get contract they will move down this way okay and the intercostal muscle here get contract and lift up the chest lift the chest up and expand that way the volume inside the chest cavity here will increase and that decrease the pressure inside the chest cavity so when the pressure outside the chest here will be higher they will the, the wind here will get into the body this way so he's breathing in but if the diaphragm here get relaxed the diaphragm will get move up this way and in the costal muscle here get relaxed so the chest cavity here move down and contract so the pressure inside the precious cavity here the volume here will be reduced and the pressure will be higher so that way the air in the chest cavity here will flow out of the body okay so this conclusion of the breathing in wind out mechanisms in case of breathing in the diaphragm he get contract and move downward okay and rib muscle he get contract and move up and expand up and out the chest cavity get expanded and increase the volume and decrease the pressure so that way the air the airflow here the wind will flow from the outside body into inside the body so the breathing mechanisms for the breathing out the diaphragm here we get relaxed and move upward move up and the rib muscle he get relaxed okay rib get relaxed and move down and in this way here decrease the volume and increase the pressure okay and the wind here will flow out of the body to the environment because the pressure get higher okay the gas exchange that occur in the alveoli when the oxygen here oxygen will flow by diffuse with the alveolar membrane or thung yeo hum pot it is the small membrane thin membrane that wrapping around the alveolus and they bind with the hemoglobins okay inside the hemoglobin here in the red blood cells 
So that way, here the oxygen gas here can combine with the hemoglobin and get oxyhemoglobin. The bicarbonate ion SCO3 minus this one combine to the acid or H plus. Okay, and it turn into the carbonic acid H2CO3. This one and the carbonic acid here will dissociate into the water and carbon dioxide. So this is CO3 minus. It is a hydrogen carbonate, and this is the acid. So they combine together to get carbonic acid this way and dissociate into the water and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide here release here yeah, from bicarbonate, combine with acid to get carbonic acid, and get out of the uh, blood vessels and go to the alveolar space and move out of the body this way, and the oxygen he move this way into the blood. Okay, gas exchange that occur into the body cells. When when the uh, oxyhemoglobin transfer or flows through the body cells, the oxyhemoglobin here will release oxygen. This one, okay, oxyhemoglobin break and get oxygen. And here, the first here, the one. This is the red blood cells. Oxygen will get into the cells this way. And the body cell here release carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide here can go into two ways. The first one here, hemoglobin combined with carbon dioxide. You will get carbaminohemoglobin, HbCO2. Okay. And sometimes here, the carbon dioxide here can combine with water and forming carbonate ion and acid. This one, water and carbon dioxide combine together to get carbonic acid and turn into the hydrogen carbonate ion and acid. Okay. So you have two choices of the carbon dioxide to move into the lung. This is the first choice and this is the second choice. But basically, the second choice here will be more efficient than the first choice. Okay. And type of the cellular respiration. The cellular respiration is process that the cells take the uh, produced energy. So we can have two ways. The first way we call aerobic respiration. It is the way you use oxygen inside the cells to produce large amounts of energy. And if you have the anaerobic, anaerobic here you don't have the oxygen, uh, you, don't, you don't use the oxygen. This case here they produce less amounts of energy. Okay, and unit of energy we call ATP is unit of energy. For aerobic here you get 36 to 38 ATP per one glucose molecules. The glucose molecule is quite important for the respiration process. And anaerobic here use do not use oxygen to produce the energy. So they can produce energy just only two ATP. When you compare this one to this one is about uh, X. 18 to 19 fold okay, of energy you can produce from the aerobic respiration. Okay. If you compare the anaerobic aerobic to anaerobic here, yeah, you will have more ATP in case of an anaerobic. And you have less ATP in case of anaerobic. Consumption of, of oxygen. Aerobic require oxygen, but anaerobic do not require oxygen. And the production here, they produce just, for the anaerobic, they produce just only carbon dioxide and water. But anaerobic here produce, it also produce ethanol and lactic acid from the fermentation process. Fermentation means you use glucose and produce the other kinds of the, the chemicals. For example, the acid or the ethanol. This one, or in high use term, ganmat. And in the aerobic respiration here you have just only one one type of the process but the anaerobic here you have two choice that is a lactic acid fermentation and the ethanol fermentation in case of lact lactic acid fermentation here you have glucose molecule and the glucose molecule here get um, they change okay they change here into the chemical we call pyruvate and during this change they produce the ATP okay this is the energy the lactic acid fermentation here occur in the muscle cells of the human body and the bacterial cells. And after two pyruvate here, we get the electron. Basically, the NAD plus here is a molecule, it's just only the molecule NAD plus. And they carry the electron from the glucose here 
to get an ADH and an ADH here donate electron to the structures so the pyruvate here return into the lactate okay lactate here is also lactic acid when you get the proton to get the acid return the same thing it is lactic acid this way but for the ethanol the ethanol here it's quite different. Start this one occur in the yeast cells, the fungus, and even the, uh, the plant cells. The glucose, key, the glucose here turn into the pyruvate the same way, and NAD here turn into the NADH by carrying electron, and ATP here it produce ATP here two ATP. But one one more step here, pyruvate need to release two carbon dioxide. Here, two pyruvate produce two carbon dioxide. The base basically the glucose here contains six carbon one two three four five six, but the pyruvate here contain just only three. So you have two molecules of the pyruvate to equal to six carbon inside the glucose, and they release each of the pyruvate here release carbon dioxide out, one carbon dioxide, two carbon dioxide. So you get two acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is just only the the chemicals okay that carry two carbon so you have two atom uh, two molecules of two so it is four one two three four this way and ethanol here also the chemicals with two carbon and you get it two molecules like this so the ethanol here can be used for rubbing alcohols like this thank you